Okay, so I've added a second cabinet. The main reason for it was to get a sequencer and some extra modules to support additional synthesis capabilities. Um, this right here, this 8-space module is a Q119 sequential controller set up already with a pattern. A number of other modules to it, extra oscillators, a mixer, a couple of envelope generators, another filter, signal processor, amplifier. Now a sequential controller is just that, it's a controller. It generates voltages. Unlike a, a keyboard type synthesizer, uh, where a sequencer might generate MIDI events, or MIDI notes, um, this doesn't generate notes, it generates voltages. And of course, in a voltage-controlled synthesizer, that's what you need. Uh, the voltages drive other modules in the system. So when we dial in these values here on these dials, we're really just dialing voltages. So the thing has to be carefully tuned to achieve what you want it to achieve. With the sequencer set up the way it is now and dialed to the voltages that it's dialed to and the way it's configured, I can drive it. I mean, I've got a pattern. I can drive that pattern from the keyboard and have it adjust its relative pitch as I change notes on the keyboard. And you know, it kind of gives you a, a way to accompany yourself and to to have multiple parts that you're contributing to yourself on the keyboard at the same time the sequencer is driving part of it. Q119 is kind of constructed in three sections. The first is a kind of control section here. We have, you can set the modes 1x24, 3x8. The output levels, whether to cycle continuously or once. Whether to sequence just up or up and down. It also has a built-in internal oscillator that you can use to control the rate that the steps are executed and you can adjust the rate of the oscillator here. It has a low and a high range. You've got manual step and you've got a bunch of start and stop buttons and a set in button where you can set the last step of the sequence. Next you have the voltage control section and you can dial the voltages for each individual step. The LED LED shows which state is being executed. You can step through them manually. And finally, the last section is kind of the output section. You can patch into individual banks. There's three banks of eight. Or you can patch into the master output. It has glide control. And you can add additional voltage to any input, control voltage input that you plug in here. You can add or subtract voltage um, using this control here. Patching the Q119 is not really so different than patching a keyboard. Uh, it is a controller, so um, it has control voltage out and gate out just like a keyboard does. And so <coughs> what we'll do is we'll wire the control voltage out from it, the output here into a multiple. And then we'll wire that multiple, output from that multiple, into the one volt per octave oscillator input. At this point it's very similar again. We can wire the output from the from the oscillator 
into the input of the mixer. Take pulse output of the oscillator into the mixer. Take the output of the mixer and wire it into signal input and our filter. And then take the output of our filter and send it to a voltage control amplifier. Signal input, voltage control amplifier. We also have gate output from the se sequencer. We can run that from the sequencer to the bottom section of the multiple. <coughs> and we'll use the gate output to trigger <coughs> envelope generator. So we'll run the output from the multiple to the gate input on the envelope generator. And then we'll run output from the envelope generator, like we always would, or typically would, I should say, uh, from the envelope generator to the control input of the amplifier. Okay. Now, at this point, we've basically, we've got a basic patch. We've got it patched in. I've already got a cable running from the output of the amplifier into an external amp, so a PA system. Now that it's essentially patched, it's just a simple patch, we should be able to get some sound out of it by triggering the start of the sequencer via the start button. I previously set the end of the sequence to be on step A. It's a good time to point out how you set the end. So with the sequencer stopped, you press the set end button. Flashes. Now if I press it repeatedly, quickly, it'll step through the different steps. And where I stop is where it'll end. So. so that's how you set the last step of a sequence, just by repeatedly pressing the step end button. Now if I do it, it'll stop at step eight, cycle back to step one. At this point, we might like to add some keyboard control. It takes the control voltage output from the keyboard, and I can plug that into the add input up here. And that's how I can control um, the relative pitch up or down from the keyboard of the sequence. So if I start it now, and I, you won't be able to see it, but I'll be pressing some keys, you'll be able to hear how it changes. We can add extra control beyond that. You have voltage control of the thing, you can either run it when the key is depressed and only when the key is depressed by plugging into the go input. You can run it continuously and have it reset from the beginning each time i plug in the start input. So it gives you a lot of control. Uh, typically, uh, I think, or not commonly, you'll, you'll plug into a keyboard uh, as a way of controlling the pitches of these things. Uh, just to show you how this thing is tuned, um, I've got it set to run eight steps. Each of these dials is set to a particular voltage. Because it's plugged into an oscillator, of course, we generate a tone from that, or pitch. Um, these dials are very sensitive. Uh, just to show you, it, it takes some work to, if, if you're trying to get a musical pattern, it takes some work to try to get the pitches right. Typically, I'll start by using a tuner, a little guitar tuner I've got, to set the first pitch and then set the others relative to that. So this is set to C right now, a middle C more or less. So if I turn the dial, just very, very sensitive, very wide range, very, very wide range. Goes out all the way to ultrasonic where it's almost beyond the range of hearing.
take some uh, some time to get the if you're trying for pitch, it takes some time to get that pitch right. You can't just dial in a note and say play C here and A here. You have to tune the thing. It's going to be used for much more in pitches. You can you can uh, do envelopes with it. You can control a filter with it. You can create drum sound output from it. Uh, there's any number of things you can do with a sequencer. This is just one example of how you attach it.